massively. <laughs> okay, we're here at uh, Runway Studios with a very strange reflection on the lens. This is Ben Amesbury, the engineer, worked with Magic Numbers amongst other people. He's uh, recording us today and he's just going to talk us through the way he set up the drum mics. Okay. Uh, I start with the overheads because I always find however many mics you put up, you always end up kind of relying mainly on the sound from the overheads in the mix. Uh, so that's where I start. I get my sound from them. Uh, I use a pair of DPAs just because I find that the uh, <coughs> the spread, the sort of pickup pattern from them just works really well in that configuration. The old 45 degrees and a bit of string from the center of the snare drum to make sure they're equidistant. So you've got one above the snare and one behind the drummer? Yeah, roughly. Okay. Uh, you try and get it sort of equidistant to the kick and the snare. I mean, you can spend all day getting it absolutely perfect, but essentially, as long as the snare is pretty much in the centre, then I'm happy with that, really. And it gives a really good spread of the rest of the cymbals and the toms and stuff. And the fact they're equidistant means there's no phase problems. Yeah, right. and it means the snare should be bang. Well, if they're panned hard left and right, the snare should be bang in the middle. Okay. Uh, you can do it so it's absolutely equidistant to the kick as well but the, the mic often ends up being over here. Right. And it, sometimes it's not really that convenient, but that'll mean that the kick and the snare will be smashed in the middle. Okay. That's, that's a, a theory anyway. I've never actually got it perfect with the kick as well, so I always kind of give up and just get it like this, because otherwise people start moaning because they're <laughs> hanging around for hours on end. <laughs> uh, the rest of the kit, I pretty much just do the standard. Uh, it depends what mics are in the studio. I haven't, I haven't really brought that many drum mics with me. Uh, so just standard D112 and the kick, uh, 57 top and bottom of the snare, 421s on the toms. Uh, I actually used 414s on the ride and the hat and that was simply because I forgot to bring my 451s. Uh, with the sort of, with a lot of the bands that I work with, they, uh, they like to have the control over the ride because they do a lot of stuff where it's just you just get a ride and nothing else for one section and sometimes you just want to get that little bit of control so I always mic up, not many people do mic up the ride but I do but like I say I would uh, prefer, prefer to use 451s but I just forgot to bring them because uh, oh, yeah, they weren't with the rest of my kit uh, standard procedures on the coals to pick up the room uh, let's just explain to the viewers what these are these are coals ribbon mics I would 4038 is based on an old BBC design, okay. which uh, Coles bought the patent up to, I think, that's, or I'll gather it anyway. Uh, but I always use them on a room if I've got a pair to hand. And we've got them pretty much framing the kit, right? Pretty if much. I sit in the drum... They could have afforded to go back a bit, right. but because of the sort of bleed and spill issues in this room, it's probably safer bet to become closer. So I'm sitting on the drum stool. There's one there, and there's one there, and there's the kit in front of me. And then we've got this one rubbish mic, what we call the slam mic here, right? Yeah, it's just like a sort of 57-esque thing. It's even got a switch, which uh, <laughs> definition it's definitely of a, rubbish. Definition of a cheap mic. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, exactly. about, sorry about that, Shaw. That's our in, uh, that's our endorsement deal gone. You can tell <laughs> something's rubbish if it's got a switch. All right. <laughs> But yeah, I kind of try and sort of, I always stick one of these up just for a laugh really, just to kind of see what kind of crazy sound you can get. Sometimes you'll find that it, it does something amazing depending on the part of the song. Sometimes it's absolutely useless, it just depends. Uh, I try and get it kind of pointing sort of somewhere between the kick and snare. So it's generally concerned with the kick, snare and hat. And I distort the preamp on the way in and uh, squash the hell out of it with 1176 and make it suck. <laughs> okay. So I find on sort of uh, just kick hat, just kick hat and snare parts. If you want to pick it up halfway through for a bridge or something like that, chuck a bit of that in, and it kind of changes the energy of things. Uh, okay. That's mainly what I use it for. Sometimes pick up something really interesting with it. It. I, I think it's more about the part than the sound. If you know what I mean, it's more about what's being played. Sometimes that thing won't do anything. It'll just be just a racket. If there's loads of symbols, it's kind of useless. But okay. I say for sort of simple stuff. Okay. I find it's kind of handy. I'll just take one more swing around the kit. What patterns are the 414s on? Like a cardioid, I believe. Oh, just, just, just to uh, eliminate as much spill. 
Okay. <clears throat> and in fact, the project we're working on, we're recording pretty much in one room, and we've achieved quite a lot of separation. We've got the drums up this end, there's a bass amp round the corner in this sort of kitchen area. There's an artist here, a bass amp there and a bass DI. Then the artist here with the acoustic guitar and a DI and Kemper profiling amp for electric. We've got my guitar amp in a cupboard. Actually it's in the shower room with a couple of screens just to, and a carpet just to deaden the room slightly. And again a 414. What's the 414 set to on that? Uh, I think it's just Tiger Wood actually. Okay. I just, uh, I just find that uh, if something the guitar's going to be really rocky, yeah, it's going to do something yeah. dynamic. But if the guitar's, the guitar's just yeah. light, that's yeah. see. If the guitar's going to be yeah, more yeah, sort of feel based yeah. as a part, yeah. then I find it, I just prefer I to use like a condenser if I've only got one mic. Normally, I'd, if I've got a twin, I'd use two mics, but uh, I'd use one of each, like an RE20 and a 414 or something like that. I'd like a FLEP 47, but I can't find one affordable. Right. They're like, they can do no wrong, as far as I'm concerned, which is what I'd also use on the outside of a kick if I had one. Okay. So just kick up this amazing sort of s like, like sub end wallop, which is nice if you're relying on the D112 to kind of sort of smack. And we've got the D112 just sitting in. Yeah, I find if you've only got one mic, mm. I prefer to go sort of in the hole as opposed to in the drum because then you get the slap and you get the, the woof Brilliant. as much as you can. Okay. Thank you, Ben. And you've also got your own studio. Tell us where we can find you. Uh, I'm over in Notley Farm, which is in Tame in Oxfordshire. And uh, we've just basically got it back. We've been out there for a year because I've been doing magic numbers. So my room became a storage unit. <laughs> but now we're back in there. And uh, yeah, you can find us at, uh, one second. Find us on Facebook. It's probably the best place to find us, which is uh, One Function Music. One Function Music. Yeah. O-N-E, yeah. then O-N-E, function. F-U-N-K-T-I-O-N, M-U-Z-I-K. M-U-Z-I-K. Yeah, we spelt Great. it deliberately wrong for a lot of people. <laughs> Great. Then people can't forget. Thank you very much, Ben. That's brilliant. No Thanks for your help.